ferrous materials. I believe I said this last class, if you come out of this course and you don't know the difference between ferrous and non-ferrous materials, that's really, really bad. Scale of 1 to 10, 1 being not that big of a deal, 10 being a big deal, if you don't know, it's like a 10, all right? Yep. Does that mean you build it? I guess technically you go that route, yeah. But that's called the old blame game. That's not, that's not good soft skills, pal. <laughs> So ferrous materials are related to iron. Ferrous alloys are therefore iron-based alloys. Non-ferrous. So iron-based alloys, right? The biggest misconception that there is out there is ferrous is magnetic and non-ferrous is non-magnetic. But that is true for most of the most cases. So it's not necessarily fact though, so it isn't fact. So we can take a piece of steel. Heat it up, it's going to change its cubic structure, and it's going to become non-magnetic. So, and I will do that before next class, and I'll have it on video so that we can show you doing that on the big board there. That way it gets seen by the online course people as well. So non-ferrous are metals other than Iron alloys. That is the definition of the difference. Iron based, non iron based. So if you're on Jeopardy, you say, what is the difference between ferrous and non ferrous? You're going to say, ferrous materials have iron, non ferrous do not. So now we're going to hit some non-ferrous. We know what ferrous materials we most commonly use, right? Like steel. <clears throat> non-ferrous metals like copper Date back to prehistoric times. Used for tools. As well as ornaments. Be a good tool, copper. I guess it depends what you're building, but copper's pretty soft, right? So it's probably not the best tool, right? They have copper hammers, right? They're usually brass, actually, which is very close, but that way it doesn't leave little indents. It's going to get indented, that's why they have those. The machinists should use them on the top of the mills every time. Otherwise, it mushrooms over, and then the, you can't get that big threaded rod out of there, right? Or a plastic one. Ornaments probably all right, but copper, what's it turn when it gets weathered? It turns green, right? Is green a good color? No, but green sucks. Uh-huh. One of the main... Whoops. Symbols of our country is made out of copper, right? <laughs> Statue of Liberty, right? Yeah. 
Look what color it is. Back then, it used to be just, you know, metal looking. Now it looks like it came out of milk. Green. Can you go up in the arm still, or did you hear of that? No, no, up in the arm? They had a big problem with galvanic corrosion, which we'll go over later on in this class. Like we talked with the Ford uh, aluminum beds, it's the same thing with copper and then how this thing was built. And if you look it up, it'll, there's a big, there's big, huge documentation on this because it was, had the seawater right there, which was the electrolyte from the galvanic corrosion that happened. So the uh, Statue of Liberty is a great example of, of galvanic corrosion. But it is made out of copper, so if you recycle it, you can probably get, you know, some decent cash. <laughs> so ornaments, probably not that great of a thing either. It's going to turn green, unless you want it to be green. It is extracted from various ores by smelting. somebody in the class a while back say, what is smelting? Smelting. All these ores are, or are these materials are kind of produced similarly, but not exactly the same. So they have little variances in how they're actually produced. <coughs> yeah. so smelting is the process. Lost it of he ores. To a high temperature. In the presence of a reducing agent. such as carbon or as we know coke and of a fluxing agent it down and then pull off the gango. Dross, slag, whatever you want to call it. The garbage. Get the garbage out of it, right? Sulfuric ores are ground. Require a roasting process. Snake poisonous? Yep, sure is. The fume is destructive to the environment. Good. 
surrounding the smelter. So that collection of the fume is required. I used to have a heavy buddy that worked at a smelter. And I said, they could get, you know, a good respirator for that. Yeah, but it's hot, so I take it off. <laughs> if they're collecting it and filtering it because it's bad for the environment, I'm sure it's great for the old lungs, right? It's hot, so I take it off. Fume collection can do one of two things. They're either going to filter it or they're going to ship it outside in the pretty blue sky, right? Most places require filtration now. It's just, you know, the day we live in, they don't want to, you know, pollute the environment, so they're going to collect it and filter it. And then I don't know if they do with the filters until they're done. Probably bury them somewhere. But. The process. So that's the process for um, not electrical grade um, copper. We're going electrical now. The process to make copper into electrical grade copper. Applications for this would be like copper pipe, but that's getting replaced too now, right? Look at your house, it's got copper pipes, right? If it was built, you know, relatively, I guess a long time ago, probably five years ago and before. Everything is going to what now? The plaques, right? You're saying it expands better than copper, so if you freeze it, it won't burst. Something about plastic pipes, I just don't trust. I don't know why, but. I don't know. They're held together with shark bites. Did you say shark bites? Yeah. Shark bites are garbage. I have seen them withstand pretty good pressure. They do, but yeah, no, I got a whole story about shark bites, so I'll tell you some other time. But yeah, it's um, got those little rings and they clamp them down. And Something about that, and I don't like either. I don't know why. Hold on by the mechanical fastener rather than solder. I don't know. Solder got lead in it, though, right? The old stuff did. So when you're thinking, drinking water is going over lead and copper, or it's going over plastic. I don't know. So, electrical grade, the copper ore. Is smelted in a reverberatory or electric furnace to produce an impure. Alloy called matte. Match with an E. Big bin of it somewhere. There you go. 
you can buy this, it's in stock. So you can buy that if you were going to, I don't know, produce something from a, like a foundry, do a casting or something. That's so what they're going to ship it in. The stuff I've seen in plants are like this. Yeah, they're like this. But that's just the place I was at at the time when I was at. In Faulkner, won't mention any names. So that's your impure alloy, it needs to be refined more, right? Air is then blown through the molten mat. And a converter. sulfur to produce a refined copper known as blister copper. Tell by the look of it, it's obviously going to need to be continued to be refined, right? Further refinement is necessary. for electrical is done through electrolysis. The process of electrolysis, which I did not define. Have you ever seen electrolysis done? They do it with uh, unwanted hair removal, right? You ever seen it with a fish? You stick the probe in the water and all the fish float up. That's fishing for all you fishermen. See, right there. Electrolysis of copper chloride. Ooh, they have the cartoons on it. Negative cathode, positive anode, and you can see is that chlorine. Chlorine, yeah. It's all going over here. It's all going over here, collecting on the electrodes. It's pretty tough to read. There's a good example right there. See, it's attracting all that copper over there. 
thought maybe there'd be a real picture of it, but apparently not. I guess that's a real picture, but. Delete that, electrolysis. Uh, go away, go away. Go all. Ah, oh, just one of the electrolysis. Like, electrolysis is another type of hair removal. Uh, look, look at all the clinics you can go get your hair pulled out. We want the technical definition so we can at least read it out loud. And here I go to Wikipedia again. There's a technique that uses direct electric current to drive an otherwise non spontaneous chemical reaction, right? Electrolysis is commercially important as a stage in the separation of elements from naturally occurring sources, such as ores, using an electrolytic cell. The voltage that is needed for electrolysis to occur is called decomposition potential. That was really good in layman's terms. Positive, negative, right? Cause and reaction. Anytime you see cathode anode and something, one of them causes something, right? At that stage, now you'll see a lot of this. Sometimes the byproducts from these metals are use, are useful, right? So, like you said, get the iron out. Is iron useful? Iron is useful, right? So, with copper, there's some precious metals that come out of it too. At that stage. Yes, they, they collect it and then put it into a whatever, whatever they're going to use it for. At that stage, impurities. Such as gold. No. Is gold an impurity? <laughs> Such as gold. And silver are collected at the bottom of the tanks and removed from the sludge. Sludge is such a nasty word, isn't it? I bet there's a human being somewhere named Sludge. Guaranteed. I bet you he's in a metal band. A mailman? No, I bet he's in a metal band. Oh, a metal man. So they're not going to take gold and silver and pitch it over the hill, right? No, they're going to pull it out and, and separate it and refine it to something that's useful. All right. That's all I have to say about copper, but let's go back over here. We're going to go into the zinc next. We got time. But let's look up copper uses. So what do we got for uses? Copper applications. So applications, anytime we do applications, I try to look at it for most metals, what is it actually used for, right? People know copper is wiring, tubing, uh, there's other uses obviously. Architectural, oh yeah, I didn't think about that, they have people put copper flashing in their houses, you know, people that do that have a lot of money, right? I'll throw some copper flashing, it'll look nice, yeah. Anyways, automotive copper is an essential component component of many of the latest design elements. Electrical, this is a big one, right? Electrical, even when you're talking automotive, they, they put, you know, how much copper is in a car as far as wiring goes and copper parts that need to conduct electricity. So it goes back down to electrical, right? Pipe, tube, and fittings. Plumbing, fire sprinklers, and more, you know. 
So that's kind of not going away, but it's getting replaced by PAX Red. Fuel gas, natural piping systems, industrial, electronics, they're saying electronics and industrial again. It's probably the same thing with marine. Harsh environments. Machine products, copper, alloy, and bar products are well suited for it. Telecommunications, because of the copper wiring, right? So the application for copper is basically wiring, right? The main one. Copper, zinc, it's a big one. The chief ores in zinc. Chemistry. Now, this is why. Sulfides, right? Carbonates. Silicates. And oxides. found in um, New Jersey that it was named after, and it's Franklinite. A zinc ore. Found in the USA. So zinc, iron, manganese are all useful things, right? It is named after Franklin. Mines in New Jersey. sale. Two houses down. There it is. Just a rock, right?
there is Franklin Burr's Mines, where we're saying to get these places there. They look pretty rough, right? We're not doing any of that mining stuff. New Jersey Mines. Coming out of the side of a mountain, right? These, these people probably all made a lot of money. They're retired now. They don't ever worry about money. Something New Jersey did right. I'm just kidding. New Jersey is a fine state. Zinc ores are also principally found in Missouri. Who's got beef with Missouri, anybody? You got beef with Missouri? I don't like them. Why? Kansas? Anybody got beef in Kansas? The band? No, the state. I've been to Kansas once, and I'll tell you, we're going to Kansas State University. You get off the plane, you get in a bus, and you go, the thump, the thump, the thump, the thump, the thump for hours, and there's nothing there. Then I looked out the window at one point and there was a bunch of camels. Feel the camels. I had no idea why. And somebody said, you never looked that up. So we ended up looking it up and it was because they eat the, the grass. So they release them out there to just eat the grass now. Pretty flat, straight, not a lot going on, right? Oklahoma. We got beef with Oklahoma. Texas does, right? Texas hates Oklahoma. Oklahoma hates Texas, right? Mm -hmm. Tennessee. And Idaho. If you like potatoes, you cannot have problems with Idaho. If you have a problem with potatoes for some reason, Now, to be able to get this stuff locally is always better, right? Because it's cheaper. You have to get it from other countries, and who knows if there's tariffs anymore. I don't know what's going on with that stuff, but it's always better locally, right? The process to get the zinc from its ores. Now if you go back, you can see there's a pretty good contrast in this rock of what's holding it together and what the actual rock is, right? That's why they're going to start with a grinding Milling takes place to separate the zinc ores from other metals. We're going to chop it up, right? Zinc ore may be reduced by burning off the zinc as an oxide by using a roasting process. So zinc ore may be reduced by burning off the 
the zinc. As an oxide by using a roasting process. Or cook it up. Then leached with an acid. And the metal is obtained through electrolysis. When they do that with electrolysis, they got to get that metal off the, the actual electrodes, right? So it's not going to be in the shape you want it to be in. Last but not least, the zinc is then obtained through. Distillation. And so I'll go over here in a minute on the board. We're going to look up, last but not least, sink application. Oh, I forgot about batteries, yeah. Galvanization, right? That's got to be the number one application. Think about all the galvanized stuff, the roads. I mean, it's just the, the signs on the roads, the guardrails. I mean, look out there, I guarantee there's something zinc coated. Zinc alloys, zinc with copper. Batteries. It has good electromagnetic field resistance properties. There we go. Main end uses of zinc. Brass and bronze, right? Are you aware that brass and bronze is copper and zinc mixed together? That's all it is. Calvinization is 50%. Die castings, 17. Rolled zinc, chemicals, 6. Miscellaneous, 4. So there's mainly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 applications, and then the rest is miscellaneous. That's probably a big thing that. What is in brass? It's just the exact chemical formula. Obviously, there's different grades of every kind of metal, so don't. It should have, for the most part, lead content. It's one of the percentages. All right. Stopping right there, there we go. By weight percent. Alpha brass. I don't even know what that is. So we're not gonna worry about it, but copper is 65%, zinc is 35%. That's all brass is. You can see a batteries depending on which one you're using. Oh, they're doing the Greek alphabet, so that's gonna be 
I remember we were talking about that before, the phase diagram, how they use the Greek system. There it is. There's your first phase diagram. You can see alpha right there, beta, gamma. It, it, it just seems like it would be a lot easier if it just said what it was than to have the Greek system. I've always thought that, but what do I know? Brass instruments, right? You're in the band. I do like this right here, that's good. Brass and bronze is only 17%. I thought that would be more. Lots of like sync components and things like that, right? That's it for notes today. I'm going to do one little thing on the board here. I'm going to get you out of here.